thankfully I'm back out here in the forest again I'm trying to do sort of a little sound check I guess in a way on this uh, on these earbuds and I'm hoping that they will help a little bit with the wind um, it's still pretty windy up here and it's not projected to get any better it's supposed to be um, 60 to 70 mile an hour winds uh, it's gonna be pretty rough and I almost canceled my trip but I chose to go ahead and go with it and the reason for that is is I'm always watching the weather and I think to myself you know I want to maximize the time that I'm out here I really want to enjoy it whatever you know whatever the case may be so I tend to look for days that have much better weather I tend to look too much for days where there's better weather and I feel like I really cheat myself out of a lot of camping trips just because the wind is, you know, 10 or 15, you know, miles per hour or something like that. Usually if it gets above 15, I start going, eh, no, I don't think so because one time I was out in the woods and it was 40 degrees and raining and the, if the wind was blowing 20 miles an hour and I was absolutely miserable. Um, but I'm going to try to change that. I'm trying to do better. I want to know... If I can come out here and put up with this, then I'm going to stop cheating myself out of so many camping trips, you know, because between work, you know, everybody has a life beyond that, and the weather, when you have so many factors that decide whether or not you go somewhere, you'll probably never go somewhere. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when somebody asks when they're ready to have kids, you know, <laughs> You're never ready. You're never going to be ready. So it just is what it is at that point. So I'm going to try and find a spot that's uh, a little less windy, maybe a low-lying area. And I might actually go to the place that I showed you last time um, that I didn't camp because there was no signal. Uh, that actually right now is probably the best case scenario especially with all this wind because down in that little valley there there's very little wind if if any at all and I'd like to cook some food too and now that we're under a burn band uh, that band is not going to allow me to have a fire and all that good stuff and rightfully so I'd hate to be the one responsible for burning down the forest you know, you know due to these high winds and everything all it would take is one spark landing in the wrong place and you know it, it goes from there so I'm going to cook using a little uh, little propane canister stove, and <laughs> that thing just really doesn't work very well in the wind at all. So I have some aluminum foil, I'm going to fold that up and make a little wind break out of it, and we'll see what happens. But as for right now, I'm going to walk this little game trail that I've walked once before just to see if my, my uh, dearly departed knife might happen to be somewhere along that trail. Well, that nice little spot over there is where I was heading. Um, but when you go up there, that wind is just ripping through there. Now, it's a little bit slower in the spot where I'm standing, but see those trees? See these limbs and trees, another tree. Look at all these trees that have fallen through here. And... There's uh, some trees with questionable health. Pretty close. So, just the fact that it looks like this is an area where it's highly likely trees fall pretty often. I guess I'm gonna go somewhere else. Um, just wouldn't feel good sleeping here because especially because there is no signal in this spot and if I take a nap here and something happens a limb falls on me and I'm just injured and can't get out well I can't exactly call anybody to come and help me so now the ideal place would have been that over there that little clearing where you know I, I likely would have been pretty safe but like I said the wind is just kicking through there so, 
Well, next stop. Let's see what we get. All right, here we are. We're leaving the car. We're gonna hike up this little hill and go ahead and set up our tent. Um, I've never hiked with hiking poles before and I've got them both in one hand so I can hold the camera, but uh, they're actually pretty nice. You know, and you get that little, you hit that rock the wrong way and you get off balance or you just need a little extra push. Yeah, I like it. Not bad at all. Um, these came with a, another product that I bought. I'm going to show you. But, which is probably already foreshadowing too much. But This pack that I'm wearing is uh, Kelty Coyote 105. And I saw this on Mark's channel. And I really like the look of it. So I was thinking to myself, you know, I've really been trying to get away from that Alice pack and all the iterations of it. Um, I've been fortunate enough to use a tactical tailor pack. And it was nice. Don't get me wrong, but that sucker was not very, well, can't say not comfortable because compared to your normal Alice pack, it was comfortable. But as far as, you know, compared to an actual backpacking backpack, it was still basically an Alice pack. Get through all these weeds. Okay, this is one of the things I wanted to show you today. And uh, this is my River Country, uh, I want to say it's uh, Trekker Tent 2.2. Um, so far, after setting it up, I really like the thing. The uh, fabric really reminds me of, actually, you know what, it reminds me of zero porosity parachute fabric. But it's not, uh, it's not ripstop. Um, but... You know when they say something's larger on the inside? That is absolutely the case with this tent. Because this thing is huge inside. And one thing that I do like about this over the pup tent is number one, it's three pounds. My pup tent, I believe, is around eight. Um, sets up with trekking poles. I don't have to have the separate little poles for it. You know, which I can set up the uh, pup tent with trekking poles as well. Um, also, either with this or the pup tent, I can just run. I could have actually run a string from that, or a ridge line from that tree to that tree. And just set it up between there if I wanted to. And I wouldn't have any poles in the way at all. Um, I probably could have done that today. I think I have a ridge line in this pack. But we'll look at that tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. Right now, I'm just hoping the wind dies down enough for me to actually cook that steak that I brought. That would be great. I'm getting kind of hungry. Um, something else that I bought that just came in, uh, I want to say these both came in yesterday. And the shipping from Amazon was super fast on both of these items. I ordered these both, I want to say maybe Monday, and got them both today. Here's the other item I ordered. So let me show you outside the sheath. So, the BPS Adventurer knife. I really like it. Honestly, for 40 bucks, <laughs> you can't go wrong. And if you see any specs or anything on here, it's actually just uh, leather dust from the sheath. Um, there's no rust on this whatsoever. It came razor sharp. The spine is is actually pretty sharp too, actually more sharp than I'm uh, comfortable with. I'm probably going to take some uh, sandpaper or something and just knock a little bit of the edge off right here where you're likely to put your thumb if you're trying to choke up on it or something. So I might knock the edge off right there, but the rest of it for scraping a ferro rod would be really cool. Um, I think it's gonna work out great. I think it's gonna be a great knife. It's, you know, it's a good compromise between lightweight you know, it looks reasonably thick. Handle is really comfortable. Really feels good. 
I heard somebody say that the uh, the handle doesn't quite match up with the scales. Well, on this one it does. So I'm very happy with that, very happy with the knife. And so far I'm happy with the tent, you know. I still have to spend a night in it. You can see all I have is a little foam pad in there. I didn't even bring my inflatable mat. Um, I brought the black bag from my MSS. <coughs> Excuse me. I brought the black bag from my MSS. Didn't bring the bivy or anything like that. Um, and I brought a uh, little Trekology pillow. And that's pretty much all I have. It's not expected to get below 37 tonight up here. But with it being a little bit windy, um, I decided to go for the, the black bag instead of the green bag. But by military standards, the green bag would probably do it. But I don't trust them. So, there we go. But other than that, I've looked all around this area trying to find that knife that I dropped. I really don't think it's here. Honestly, I think it's at home somewhere, just buried. Um, I have tons and tons of camping gear now that I've collected over the years, and quite likely it's there somewhere. So I've checked all the all the weird little obscure areas where like I, you know, I've camped in this area before. So, you know, there's areas where I do dishes. There's areas where I've, uh, you know, smiled and piled. Um, so I've checked all those areas where, you know, I mean, honestly, if you lose something, <laughs> I hate to say it this way, but probably one of your best bets is to look where you, where you go to drop a deuce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, especially a knife that hangs from your belt, where are you undoing your belt at? Anywhere you, uh, anywhere you relieve yourself, you know, so you'll probably find that item sitting there, you know, next to a Mr. Hanky or something like that, you know, it'll just be waving at you, hi ho So, you know, that's always a possibility. It, c it can definitely happen. So just kind of keep that in mind. I know it's not usually a place you want to visit too much, but it happens. It happens. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you these two items. Uh, this BPS knife, yeah, granted, I haven't done a whole lot with it yet, but I have high, high hopes for it because, you know, unlike a lot of the reviews that I've seen, this one, this one came out great.